Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under, and today we're checking out the top 10 new free to play PC games to play in 2021. Don't worry, I've heard you loud and clear. You only want new free to play games, and that's exactly what I'm showing you today. Now, if you're excited for this list, make sure to hit that like button right now for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe for more videos on free to play games, and tell me in the comment section below what is your favorite free to play game that you're playing right now, and I'll heart react the best comments. But with that said, let's get straight into it. Starting off at the number 10 spot, we have Scavengers, a strategic third-person shooter where you form squads of three players and fight in a hybrid of sandbox-style PvE and class-based PvP. You start by choosing from a roster of characters known as Explorers, equip some abilities and weapons, and hop into a battle hour mixed with player versus environment events. As per the name, Scavengers has crafting and looting aspects involved to enhance your research levels, so the standard upgrade your weapons and characters are fair, and this gives it a little bit of a Last of Us feeling. Now given the high quality graphics, great gameplay, and overall polish, why is it in this spot? To be frank, it has some problems in regards to pay to win and a grindy experience, but the core idea is still there and it's executed quite well. Next up, we have Rise of Humanity, a tactical turn-based deck building game set in the future where an AI has taken over the world. Choose your hero, collect and upgrade cards, and build your deck before hopping in game, where you move and attack like a real-time strategy game, but your actions come from a randomized deck. There's a lot of elements at work in Rise of Humanity, but this mix makes the gameplay fast and ever-changing, so you've got to be on your toes. The only downfall of this game is right there in the title, and that it's only a prologue, so the game only has two levels. If you want to get the full experience, you need to buy the full game. The Rise of Humanity prologue is definitely a great window into this new turn-based deck building genre. Next up, we've got Storybook Brawl, which is basically Hearthstone Battlegrounds, but on Steam. You hop in with seven other players and face off in 1v1 rounds, with the goal being to be the last player standing. There's over 30 different heroes to command and hundreds of cards to play with, so despite the relatively simple concept, there is a bit of depth to it. The graphics are cute and simple, and that directly relates to the system requirements, as all you really need is a 1GHz processor, so basically any PC can play it. On top of this, there's a bot mode so you can hone your skills by yourself, which is perfect for learning this game. Now, is Storybook Brawl the most original game out there? Definitely not. But for low spec gamers who want a great card game experience, Storybook Brawl is there for you. Bless Unleashed is an MMORPG published by industry veterans NeoWiz, and this game is expected to be something big. Originally touted as an Xbox One exclusive and then promptly released on all current gen consoles in early 2020, Bless Unleashed has been out for a while and has a healthy player base. The reasons for its success are straightforward. Bless Unleashed has amazing graphics, deep gameplay with a huge amount of impact, and of course in-depth customization. exactly what people were looking for from an MMO in 2021. However, everyone knows that the true MMO experience is on the PC, and that's where the upcoming PC release of Bless Unleashed comes in. On the 6th of August 2021, Bless Unleashed will be released on Steam and there is a huge amount of hype around it. Graphically, this game is already insane and the power of the PC is going to push it even further. So make sure to go and wishlist it and check it out if you're interested. Merlo Above the Sun is a true gem on this list. It's an action platforming hack and slash game done by 4th year students of Digipen Bilbao. In the game's description, they say it was done with lots of love, passion, and fun, and that's so easy to see. This game is cute, fun, and beautiful. The core concept is simple. Merlo's home is gone, her friends have been kidnapped, and it's up to you to play as her and save everybody. Gameplay-wise, it's back to basics. A simple attack, jump, and dash is all you have at your arsenal, but the true joy is going through the fantastically designed maps and great visuals. It's a short game for sure, and the puzzles are fairly basic, but it's more so about the journey for this one, and given this was a student project, it's definitely a quality title. A very different inclusion to this list is Till Nord, an open world snow automobile game, and this is another game made by school students. While that concept sounds unique, the game is actually really fun as you explore the island, complete missions, and find jumps. 
go up on a high mountain to see the northern lights, race to find a mysterious lighthouse, and much more. While it's definitely not realistic, it makes it really easy to drive over the island and just have some fun. Visually, this game is actually quite impressive. It's made on the Unreal Engine and they flex its muscles a bit, with the game looking quite nice. While particularly short in length, Till Nord is a fun time and brings something new to the table for open world fans. Next up, we have Totally Accurate Battlegrounds, a game that I've mentioned a few times and for good reason. It's an extremely fun battle royale game that doesn't take itself seriously in the best way possible. It was originally a parody on the battle royale genre with its cute graphics, wacky gameplay and super weird weapons, but its free to play releases made people really take notice of this fun game and the player count has absolutely exploded. Now that's all for good reason, the gunplay is really solid and the game is well made, plus it's a fun social experience with not only your friends but also random people because of the voice chat. It's super easy to start playing too, you jump in game, pick up some guns and shoot the weird looking enemies that are fairly easy to see. The time to kill is rather high as well and this unironically is a great game to try as your first battle royale title, especially because it has a great second chance system as well. Now with PUBG Lite being taken offline and Cuisine Royale basically dead, Totally Accurate Battlegrounds is the new contender for a great social battle royale game, check it out if you're interested. From first impressions, you would think that Brofall's Ultimate Showdown is simply a free-to-play Fall Guys clone. And while in concept you would be right, this game is actually different and iterates on the formula. Visually though, it borrows heavily from Fall Guys. The cutesy, bright and bubbly visuals permeates every aspect of this food-inspired game. Gameplay wise though, it changes things up majorly, as the majority of the game is an extremely fun but also frustrating death run. 60 players spawn in and one player is chosen as the Broccoli, otherwise known as the Death Run God, who is able to trigger traps across the course. First X amount of people to finish make it to the next round, of which there are multiple, and each Death Run course is different. The final round is a free for all where the last one to survive is the victor and it gets very tense. While simple in concept, it's executed fantastically. No team modes means no bad teammates and the death run element spices things up. Brofalls is truly the free to play Fall Guys alternative that people have been asking for. Make sure to check it out. Fans of this channel know I like first person shooters, in particular free to play ones, and by far the most hyped one coming out this year is Enlisted, the squad based massively multiplayer shooter developed by Dark Flow Software and published by Gaijin Interactive. Enlisted has a straightforward goal, recreate the massive battlefields of World War II in a way that has never been done before. This includes the famous Invasion of Normandy, Battle of Moscow and many many more. Enlisted is going up against the Titan of Battlefield in a big way, and the first front is the graphics which look amazing. It's 2021 through and through and looks beautiful not only on the PC but also the Xbox S and PS5, and this gives Enlisted a huge leg up compared to many free to play shooters out there. Gameplay wise, Enlisted is solid but not groundbreaking. Think a combo of Battlefield and Heroes and Generals. Movement has slight parkour elements to it so you can scale around the map and when you get sick of walking there's tons of vehicles such as cars, planes and tanks. Now the gameplay is really really interesting. Shooting wise it's in line with more hardcore shooters given the insanely quick time to kill. And you would think oh you hop in game, you get shot, you die, just spawn die, spawn die. But the really interesting thing is there's AI squads and so with these AI squads you go and spawn in with you and then about 4 or AI and then when you die you can swap to someone else in your squad another AI and then swap again and then swap again and then when your whole team gets wiped then you go and respawn and so it's an interesting way if you die very quickly to just get really right back into the action and it's perfect for new players. So overall, Enlisted looks great, plays great, and it's very, very well-rounded, lots of depth to it, and it's perfect for people that are new to the FPS genre or are veterans. Coming in at the honourable mention spot is Vigor, which is a looter shooter based in post-apocalyptic Norway, developed by Armour and Daisy veterans Bohemia Interactive. 
The goal is to stay alive against a harsh environment and also other players that are known as outlanders, and that's by seeking resources and better equipment either from abandoned buildings or taking out other players. Now people have compared this to third person escape from Tarkov and it makes sense. You have the tense moments and the looting, but Vigor is definitely unique enough to separate itself from the pack. Now this game is great, however the reason why it's in the honourable mention spot is because currently you can only play it on the PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch, but not the PC. Given this game is going directly against Escape from Tarkov, it makes sense to focus on the console, but the lack of PC support is disappointing given how great this game is, and I know this is a PC list, but I really wanted to mention this game because it is quite fun. Okay, so another very quick honorable mention, and this one's from Google, they brought out a new Doodle and it's called Doodle Champion Island Games. Basically, this is for the Tokyo Olympic Games and it's a browser-based Pokemon-styled game where you move around the island and complete sport mini-games, but also there's dozens of side quests as well. The minigame is actually quite fun, but the true gem about this game is the graphics and the animation. Google partnered up with Tokyo-based animation studio, Studio 4 Degrees, and the outcome of this game looks absolutely amazing. Heaps of effort put into it, so make sure to check it out. And since we're talking about browser games, if you guys want to use the browser that I use every single day to get max FPS, no ads, and earn free cryptocurrency, then download Brave Browser right now, link in the description below. Downloading Brave is by far the best way to directly support the channel, so thank you guys so much. But with that said, let's go and check out the number one spot. Taking the number one spot, of course we have Mark, the adventure survival roguelike game made by the hugely popular YouTuber called Danny. Muck, like Minecraft, drops you into a randomly generated map where you need to collect resources, find items, and build a base to survive for as long as you can, which you can do solo or multiplayer with friends. Visually, this game is wild and is classic Danny style. Simple but effective graphics which really don't take itself too seriously. Instead, the focus is on the chaotic gameplay where you scramble to build and survive. As the days go on, the difficulty goes up and up, and you also have to fight bosses that prove very difficult to do so. I'll keep this one quick, but simply, Muck is fun. It's a no-frills, straight-up experience, and given the hugely positive reception, it seems that a lot of people find it fun, and I think you guys will find it fun too. Muck. 